Hello, today we will be reviewing the clinical management of gestational diabetes mellitus, GDM. This video does not cover pregnancy in pre-existing diabetes. The main objectives of this video includes understanding diagnosis and screening guidelines of GDM, management of GDM, as well as complications of GDM. The definition of GDM offered by the ACOG guidelines is the onset or first recognition of abnormal glucose tolerance during any part of pregnancy. This is different from those by the other organizations, which talks about diabetes diagnosed only during the second half of pregnancy. For these other organizations, diabetes diagnosed in early pregnancy is not considered GDM. Using the International Association of Diabetes and Pregnancy Study Group's Screening and Diagnostic Criteria for Diabetes and Pregnancy, Global Prevalence of GDM is estimated to be 17% and 25% in Southeast Asia. Specifically, in Singapore, about 15-20% to of all pregnancies are complicated by GDM. The highest risk factors for GDM is personal history of impaired glucose tolerance, impaired fasting glucose, or GDM, in previous pregnancy. Other risk factors include family history of diabetes, a BMI of more than 30, older maternal age of more than 35, and medical conditions associated with diabetes such as polycystic ovary syndrome. Compared to the 2.75 grams 2-hour OGTT used to diagnose normal diabetes mellitus in the population, the 3.75 grams OGTT is used for GDM instead. The additional reading at 1 hour point is important as it contributes to about one-third of GDM cases in Singapore and is clinically relevant to management of the complications. The process includes fasting overnight for minimally 8 hours with no food and drinks other than plain water. Subsequently, a fasting blood glucose is taken before the patient takes a standard 75 grams glucose drink. The blood glucose test is then repeated at both 1 hour and the 2 hour mark after the drink is taken. GDM is diagnosed if any one of the three blood results indicate a higher than expected blood glucose level. The cutoffs are as follows. Fasting glucose levels of more than 5.1, more than 10 at the 1 hour mark, and 8.5 to 11 at the 2 hour mark. If there is blood glucose of more than 11 at the 2 hour post OGTT, it is likely attributed to pre-existing diabetes mellitus instead. The International Association of Diabetes and Pregnancy Study Group and WHO recommends that all pregnant women are screened for GDM between 24 to 28 weeks of gestation. This gestational age is chosen as 24 weeks is when insulin resistance increases significantly leading to hyperglycemia in those with insufficient insulin secretory capacity to maintain euglycemia. For those at risk of GDM, or undiagnosed type 2 diabetes, such as those with GDM in their previous pregnancy, the 2.0 GTT for population screening is administered earlier in pregnancy around 16 weeks for early detection and management. For those with abnormal results, they will be then referred to a relevant healthcare professional for further management and intervention. If the early screening results are normal, these individuals would still need to undergo another 3.0 OGTT at 24 to 28 weeks. Women diagnosed with GDM should be educated about the conditions and implications of diagnosis and offered appropriate interventions. The women should be cared for by a multidisciplinary team of dietitians, nurses, obstetricians, and endocrinologists as deemed necessary. After the initial diagnosis of GDM, tight control of glucose is required. This is done via the 7-point blood sugar level profile, which is done via self-monitoring with the glucometer. This includes pre-meal and 2 hours post-meal readings for each of the 3 meals daily, and once more before sleep. The target values are as follows. Fasting values of 4.4 to 5.5 and 2 hour post meal readings of 5.5 to 6.6. .6. This is done twice a week 
with frequency of monitoring based on control. Additionally, a target HbA1c of less than 6% is recommended. The first line treatment of GDM is non pharmacological therapies. Up to 85% of patients can achieve the target glucose levels with lifestyles and modifications alone. This includes a special diet such as elimination or reduction of sugar sweetened beverages, restricting carbohydrate intake, and ensuring nutritional adequacy. Adults with diabetes are encouraged to perform 30 to 60 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity on most days of the week, provided there are no medical or obstetric contraindications to this level of physical activity. Exercise increases muscle mass, improves glucose management, and increases tissue sensitivity to insulin. Thus, lifestyle modifications are crucial in the management of GDM. Pharmacological therapies are only indicated if glucose levels are above target range even with non-pharmacological therapies, or in patients with fetal overgrowth. The options include insulin and selected oral hypoglycemic agents. However, only metformin and glyburide are safe for use in pregnancy. If oral pharmacotherapy alone does not adequately manage glucose levels, supplemental insulin can be prescribed. Dual use of oral agents is not recommended in pregnancy due to minimal safety and efficacy data with concerns of adverse fetal effects as both drugs cross the placenta. In patients with glute glycemic control, expected management up to 40 plus 6 weeks is appropriate with antipartum testing. However, induction between 39 plus 0 to 41 plus 0 weeks of gestation can be considered as well. In patients with suboptimal glucose control, induction of labor at 38 plus 0 to 39 plus 0 weeks is recommended to reduce complications such as infant mortality and shoulder dystocia. Regarding route of delivery, natural vaginal delivery is preferred. However, in specific indications such as estimated fetal weight of more than 4.5 kg or standard obstetric indications of C-section, a caesarean birth should be carried out instead. The complications of GDM can be broadly classified into maternal and neonatal. The maternal risks include gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, polyhydramnios, C-section, and associated morbidities. GDM is also a strong marker for future maternal development of type 2 diabetes mellitus, metabolic syndrome, and cardiovascular disease. In neonates, there is a wide range of complications including macrosomia, shoulder dystocia, stillbirth, respiratory distress, and in terms of metabolic outcomes, could be hypoglycemia, hyperinsulinemia, and hyperbilirubinemia. Additionally, there could be difficult delivery, such as operative delivery, instead of normal vagina delivery, and birth trauma from assisted delivery. As such, the complications of GDM should be managed accordingly with lifestyle and or pharmacological interventions by the multidisciplinary team. For postpartum concerns, GDM usually does resolve after delivery, but up to 50% of them develop type 2 diabetes later in life. Thus, the 2.0 GTT test is repeated 6 to 12 weeks after delivery with cutoffs as mentioned above. Patients are subsequently recommended to have annual glucose tolerance tests performed to have early detection of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Quiz time! Which of the following is not a complication of GDM? The answer is A. Fetal neural tube defects. Question 2. Which of the following is used for pharmacological treatment of GDM? The answer is C. Metformin. Question 3. Which of the following is the most important risk factor for GDM? The answer is B, a personal history of gestational diabetes mellitus. These are the references for your further reading. Thank you.